Welcome to the PhD Chapter's Guide to the Individual Study Plan, also known as the ISP. So what is the ISP? Well, the ISP is one of the most important documents you have as a PhD student. The ISP serves two main purposes. First of all, you can think of it as a contract between you and your employer, KTH. Second of all, you can think of it as a guide to help you plan your research, education, and department service during your PhD studies. So why is the ISP important? First of all, it shows how much work you have completed, and it can determine when you advance up the PhD salary ladder. We have a model on the PhD chapter website to help you figure out when you should advance up the ladder. Second, if a conflict ever arises between you and your advisor, the ISP serves as a legal document to help resolve the problem. This is why it's extremely important that both you and your advisor fill out the ISP together. So what does a good ISP look like? We are going to go through the most important parts of the ISP. Now it's important to remember that the ISP will vary greatly from student to student. However, here are a few tips that should help you along the way. The first important part is at the end of the general section. Here it says how many percent you've completed of your degree so far. You can use the model that we've mentioned from the PhD Chapters website. It's important that both you and your advisor are in agreement. Next is the section on completed courses. This will help you calculate how many percent of the required coursework you've completed. This is followed by the section of planned courses for the remainder of your PhD program. It's okay if this section is not 100% accurate, as long as you know what you're doing in the next six months. Next is an outline of your planned thesis work. It's important to write this section with your advisor to make sure that you're on the same page. Remember, the ISP is a living document, so this section will change often. This is followed by the plan for supervision between you and your advisor. Some students prefer an open door policy, while others prefer weekly meetings. It's up to you and your advisor to determine what works best for you. The results from previous study efforts section should contain your research results, like articles, manuscripts, posters, conference presentations, etc. I also recommend listing your departmental duties. You can kind of think of it as a history of what you've accomplished at KTH so far. There are certain goals and soft skills you should learn as a PhD student. List these goals in the Intended Goal of Education section. Furthermore, these goals should go hand in hand with the outlined goals of PhD education provided by KTH. At the end of the ISP, you will list when you will advance to the next step of the salary ladder and what requirements you must meet to do so. You should also list what departmental duties you have for the coming year. Here are some general tips. When writing your ISP, don't overpromise what you will accomplish in the coming year. This could have a negative effect when trying to advance up the salary ladder. We recommend that you update your ISP every six months. We feel that it's too difficult to plan what we will accomplish a year from now, so it's better to plan for the short term instead. We are currently developing an electronic version of the ISP together with KTH. We hope to test it on a few select schools in the spring of 2015. So what do you do when things go wrong and you have a conflict with your advisor when to advance up the salary ladder? The first thing to do is to contact your school's FA or PA to help you resolve your problem. If you still need additional assistance, you can contact the PhD candidate advisor through our website. This message was brought to you by the KTH PhD chapter. Thanks for watching.